Now, I'm gonna put it out there and tell you something that you might have already guessed. I am a huge science nerd. Chemistry is one of my faves, and I feel like everybody watching this channel should really know the words to the Elements song, yes? There's antimony, arsenic, aluminium, selenium, and hydrogen and oxygen, and nitrogen and rhenium. No? Okay, all right. If you've not nailed it just yet, or perhaps your knowledge of the elements is, frankly, elementary, you've come to the right place. Chalkboards out, kids, because you are about to get schooled. Right, so how many elements are there? Well, back in ancient Greece, you'd have had a much easier time of it, because according to philosophers like Aristotle, everything in the entire cosmos was made of just five classical elements. Earth, air, fire, water, and the mysterious ether. Unsurprisingly, the idea didn't really hold up under scrutiny, and by the medieval period, the first tentative steps towards what we now call science were taken by the alchemists. Although they started out with the goal of transmuting all metals into gold, they did make some important discoveries along the way. Their experiments paved the path for modern laboratory science, and in total they identified 16 alchemical elements, including antimony, arsenic and phosphorus. The thing is, they thought that all of these elements were essentially the same substance, just in differing degrees of purity. Gold was the purest, and that's why, with the right processing, even lead could be transformed into this most valuable of metals. We now know, of course, that elements don't work like that at all. Atoms are the building blocks of all matter, and atoms come in different types, each possessing different properties. Each different type of atom is a different element. So you've got small, light and floaty atoms of unreacted helium. You've got big, heavy, unstable atoms of uranium and everything else in between and beyond. The differing properties of these elements are thanks to the numbers and arrangement of the tiny particles that make them up, the protons, the neutrons and the electrons. Now, the more protons and neutrons an atom has, the more massive that element is. And it's the arrangement of the electrons that determines how reactive it is. As the legend that was Carl Sagan once said, to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. Now that's because some of the elements in the apple pie are as old as the universe itself. The lightest elements, with just one and two protons, were formed during the Big Bang. For anything heavier, it took the crushing furnace of a star to squeeze particles together. The biggest stars can make atoms as big as Mercury with its 80 protons, while exploding stars, supernovas, pack even more of a punch and they can make yet heavier elements. In fact, astronomers have recently observed the astonishing spectacle of two neutron stars colliding sending out a burst of visible light, gravitational waves, and making about 10 billion, billion, billion dollars worth of gold. Turns out, natural processes in the universe can usually only squish together enough protons and neutrons to make atoms as big as uranium, with its 92 protons. So from hydrogen to uranium, with the absence of unstable technetium, element number 43, we have 91 naturally occurring atom types. In other words, 91 elements. But that's not the end of the story. Sure, nature can only make 91, but scientists laugh in the face of nature. You see, the periodic table, it organises elements by the number of protons they have and their electronic structure. But when you put all of those natural elements in there, there are gaps. Other, bigger atoms should be possible if you had enough energy to smoosh those atoms together. How do you get that much energy? Well, particle accelerators. Atoms can be sped up at around 10% the speed of light. That's 100 million kilometers per hour and then smashed into one another in the hope that they'll fuse and make a newer, bigger atom. And in 1939, for the first time, some scientists managed just that, whacking neutrons into uranium and making a new element with 93 protons. They called it Neptunium, and it began an age of elemental experimentation that's continued for nearly 80 years. Element number 94, Plutonium, was created in a particle accelerator in 1941, but its discovery was kept a military secret till after the end of World War II. Later, two new elements were found in the debris from early atomic bomb tests. The conditions of those devastating explosions were enough to fuse atoms and create Einsteinium and 
fermium with 99 and 100 protons each. The following years saw Russian, American and German scientists bash inventive combinations of atoms together to make even more entirely new elements. Lead and chromium made seaborgium with 106 protons. Plutonium and calcium made fluorovium with 114 and so on with a new discovery coming every few years. The thing is though, as man-made elements get bigger, making them gets harder. They take even more energy and are only stable enough to exist for a few seconds at a time if you're lucky. That makes them fiendishly hard to detect. Finally, in 2015, four of the elements that had been predicted for years but evaded detection by all but the most powerful of instruments were announced. 113, 114, 117 and 118. The names of these newfound elements replaced the placeholders in the periodic table. So ununceptium became tenacine and unoctonium became organesson. And with that 118th element, the last gap in the periodic table was filled, and many say that it is now finally complete. As of 2017, 118 elements is our limit. Bigger atoms are just too heavy and unstable to exist at all. But there are others who disagree. They suggest that there's no limit to atom size and that in fact some super heavy elements could be more stable than the ones that we've already found. The thing is though, as single atoms get really, really heavy, it's likely that they're going to start behaving in weirder and weirder ways. Some experts think that quantum effects within those atoms could create and release antimatter which would be cool, but a total nightmare, as that's a whole load of new verses to add to the Elements song. And I've already got to try to add those most recent ones. There's tenosine, fluorovium, copernicum, nahonium, and borium, hassium, fermium, muscovium. Almost, something like that. Anyway, I hope this video hasn't been too boring, and my terrible puns haven't made you sulfur too much. I'm sorry, not sorry. Some people come for the puns and stay for the science, right? Well, I like to think so. If you enjoyed this, give us a like, share with your chemistry loving mates and subscribe to Earth Lab for more science originals. See you next time. Terrible. <laughs>